Robert Shaw on the actors he doesn't like to work with. Robert Shaw was born Robert Archibald Shaw on August 9, 1927, in West Thotton, Lancashire, England. Shaw came into the world during the time of economic hardship and social change. The son of Thomas Shaw, a physician, and Doreen Avery, a former nurse, Robert was the eldest of five children. The Shaw family lived in a modest home, and although his father's profession as a doctor afforded them a certain level of respectability, their financial situation was often precarious. This instability would become a defining feature of Shaw's childhood. One of the most significant events of Shaw's early life was the death of his father when Robert was just 12 years old. Thomas Shaw committed suicide in 1939, a tragic event that cast a long shadow over Robert's formative years. The loss of his father left the family in dire financial straits and emotionally shattered. Shaw's mother, Doreen, was left to raise her five children on her own, a task that proved to be overwhelming. The trauma of losing his father at such a young age profoundly affected Robert, instilling in him a sense of responsibility and a need to protect and provide for his family. This early exposure to grief and hardship would later inform the depth and intensity he brought to his acting roles. Despite the challenges he faced at home, Shaw was a bright and determined student. He attended Truro School, a prestigious boarding school in Cornwall, where he excelled academically and showed a particular talent for literature and drama. His time at Truro School was a pivotal period in his life, as it was here that he first discovered his passion for acting. Encouraged by his teachers, Shaw participated in school plays, where he quickly became known for his powerful performances and his ability to immerse himself fully in a character. This early exposure to the world of theater sparked a lifelong love of the arts and set him on the path to a career in acting. However, Shaw's time at Truro was also marked by a sense of alienation and loneliness. As a scholarship student from a working-class background, he often felt out of place among the wealthier students. This feeling of being an outsider was exacerbated by the trauma of his father's death and the subsequent struggles his family faced. Shaw's experiences at Truro School were instrumental in shaping his complex personality, one that was characterized by a fierce independence, a deep-seated drive to succeed, and a certain brooding intensity that would later become a hallmark of his acting style. After completing his education at Truro School, Shaw decided to pursue his passion for acting more seriously. He enrolled at the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art in London, one of the most prestigious acting schools in the world. His time at the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art was critical in refining his skills and solidifying his commitment to a career in the performing arts. At the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art, Shaw was exposed to the works of Shakespeare and other classical playwrights, which would become a significant part of his repertoire. He was also mentored by some of the leading figures in British theatre who recognized his talent and encouraged him to pursue his ambitions. One of the earliest highlights of Shaw's career was his involvement with the Shakespeare Memorial Theatre Company in Stratford-upon-Avon, where he played notable roles such as Macbeth and Henry VIII. These performances cemented his reputation as a formidable stage actor, capable of bringing intensity and gravitas to his roles. His work in theatre earned him critical acclaim and set the stage for his transition into film. Shaw's breakout role in cinema came in 1963 with his portrayal of the cold-blooded assassin Red Grant in the James Bond film From Russia with Love. His chilling performance as the ruthless and efficient killer opposite Sean Connery's James Bond earned him international recognition. This role not only established him as a versatile actor who could handle both heroic and villainous parts with equal skill but also led to more significant roles in major films. In 1966, Shaw delivered a standout performance in A Man for All Seasons, where he played King Henry VIII. His portrayal of the English monarch was both commanding and nuanced, capturing the king's complexities and inner conflicts. The role earned him an Academy Award nomination for Best Supporting Actor, further solidifying his status as one of the most talented actors of his generation. Shaw's ability to convey the emotional depth and psychological intricacies of his characters made him a sought-after actor for serious dramatic roles. Another iconic role in Shaw's career was that of Quint, the hardened shark hunter, in Steven Spielberg's 1975 blockbuster Jaws. Shaw's portrayal of Quint was nothing short of legendary, 
with his monologue about the sinking of the USS Indianapolis becoming one of the most memorable scenes in cinema history. The intensity and authenticity he brought to the role made Quint a character that audiences would remember for generations. Shaw's ability to create such a vivid and unforgettable character out of a relatively brief appearance in the film demonstrated his exceptional talent and versatility as an actor. In addition to his acting career, Robert Shaw was also an accomplished writer. He authored several novels, including The Hiding Place, 1959, which was adapted into a film, and The Man in the Glass Booth, 1967, which was later adapted into a play and a film. The latter was particularly successful, with Shaw's exploration of themes such as identity, guilt, and the human condition resonating deeply with audiences and critics alike. His writing was marked by its depth, intelligence, and often dark humor, reflecting the complexity of his personality and worldview. Shaw's later film roles continued to showcase his versatility and skill. In The Sting, 1973, he played the menacing gangster Doyle Lonigan, opposite Paul Newman and Robert Redford. His performance added a layer of tension and danger to the film, making it one of the most successful films of the 1970s. Shaw's ability to switch between different genres and character types, from historical dramas to thrillers to action-packed blockbusters, demonstrated his range and adaptability as an actor. His struggles with alcoholism became one of the most significant challenges of his life. Like many of his contemporaries in the entertainment industry, Shaw found himself caught in the grip of addiction, which affected both his personal relationships and professional commitments. The pressures of his career, combined with the emotional baggage from his past, led him to seek solace in alcohol. This struggle with addiction was not widely publicized during his lifetime but was well known within the industry and among those close to him. It was a battle that Shaw fought privately and while he managed to maintain a successful career, the toll it took on his health and well-being was considerable. Shaw's battle with alcohol came to a head in the later years of his life, when the physical effects of his drinking began to manifest more visibly. His once robust health deteriorated, and he began to suffer from various ailments. Despite these challenges, Shaw continued to work, driven by his passion for acting and writing. However, the combination of his declining health and the demands of his profession became increasingly difficult to manage. Robert Shaw, the distinguished British actor known for his intense performances and commanding screen presence, was not shy about expressing his views on the people he worked with. Shaw, who rose to international fame through roles in films like From Russia with Love, A Man for All Seasons, and The Legendary Jaws, held a particular disdain for certain types of actors. His critical perspective was rooted in his deep commitment to the craft of acting and his belief in the discipline, professionalism, and dedication required to create memorable performances. Shaw was a man who took his work seriously, often approaching his roles with a methodical and rigorous preparation. He believed that acting was not just about delivering lines or performing in front of the camera but about embodying a character, understanding their motivations, and bringing authenticity to every scene. This passion for the art of acting made him particularly sensitive to those he felt did not share his level of commitment. One type of actor Shaw particularly disliked working with was the prima donna. These actors, often more concerned with their image, status, or star power, could disrupt the collaborative nature of filmmaking. Shaw felt that prima donnas brought a level of vanity and self-importance to the set that was detrimental to the collective effort of the cast and crew. He believed that acting should be a selfless pursuit, where each performer is focused on serving the story and the character rather than seeking personal glory. When forced to work alongside prima donnas, Shaw often found the experience frustrating and demoralizing, as their attitudes could undermine the integrity of the production. Another group of actors Shaw had little patience for were those who lacked professionalism. This included actors who showed up late to set, were unprepared for their scenes, or failed to take direction well. Shaw, who was known for his meticulous preparation and punctuality, found such behavior disrespectful not only to the other actors but also to the entire crew who worked tirelessly to bring a film to life. He believed that every member of a production had a role to play and that when one person slacked off, it affected everyone else. Shaw's commitment to his craft meant that he expected the same level of dedication from his colleagues, and when that expectation wasn't met, 
it could lead to tension on set. Shaw also had a strong aversion to actors who were overly methodical to the point of being difficult to work with. While Shaw himself was known for his intensity and preparation, he believed there was a limit to how much an actor should immerse themselves in their role. He respected the method acting approach but felt that when it became an excuse for erratic or disruptive behavior on set, it crossed a line. Shaw preferred a balance between dedication to the craft and respect for the collaborative nature of filmmaking. He found it challenging to work with actors who took their method too far, as it often led to unnecessary conflicts and a breakdown in communication among the cast. Moreover, Shaw was critical of actors who lacked spontaneity and creativity, those who were too rigid in their approach. He valued actors who could think on their feet, adapt to the needs of a scene, and bring something fresh and unexpected to their performances. In his view, acting was as much about reacting and being in the moment as it was about preparation. Actors who were too set in their ways, who refused to take risks or explore new possibilities, frustrated Shaw. He believed that such rigidity stifled the creative process and limited the potential of a performance. Shaw's disdain for these types of actors stemmed not from a sense of superiority but from his deep respect for the craft of acting and the collaborative nature of filmmaking. He understood that a great performance often depended on the chemistry between actors, the trust they placed in one another, and their mutual commitment to the story. When he encountered actors who did not share these values, it not only made the work more difficult but also threatened to compromise the quality of the final product. The saddest and most defining moment of Shaw's life came on August 28, 1978, when he tragically passed away at the age of 51. Shaw had been in Ireland, where he was living with his third wife, Virginia Jansen, and their children. On that fateful day, Shaw had just returned from a day of golfing when he suddenly felt ill. Despite his wife's efforts to get him medical attention, Shaw suffered a fatal heart attack on the way to the hospital. His death was a shocking and heartbreaking loss to the entertainment world, cutting short the life of a man who had so much more to give both as an artist and as a person. Shaw's untimely death sent ripples through the film and theater communities. He was at the height of his career, having delivered some of his most memorable performances in the years leading up to his death. His role as Quint in Jaws had made him a household name, and his work in films like The Sting and A Man for All Seasons had earned him critical acclaim and the respect of his peers. The news of his sudden passing left fans and colleagues alike in a state of disbelief, mourning the loss of a man who had become one of the most compelling actors of his generation. In the wake of his death, tributes poured in from across the world. Directors, actors, and writers who had worked with Shaw spoke of his immense talent, his dedication to his craft, and his ability to bring depth and authenticity to every role he played. Yet, beneath the accolades and recognition was a profound sense of loss, not just for the artist, but for the man who had battled so many demons throughout his life. Shaw's passing was a reminder of the fragility of life and the often hidden struggles that many, even those who appear strong and successful, face in their personal lives. The sadness of Shaw's story is further compounded by the thought of what could have been. At 51, Shaw was still in the prime of his career, with many potential projects and performances ahead of him. His death robbed the world of a man whose contributions to film and literature were far from over. Shaw had plans to continue writing, acting, and possibly even directing, and his sudden departure left a void in the industry that was keenly felt. In addition to the loss felt by the industry, Shaw's passing was also a deep personal tragedy for his family. He left behind a wife and ten children, all of whom were devastated by his death. For his family, the loss of Robert Shaw was not just the loss of a public figure, but the loss of a husband, father, and friend. His children, in particular, had to navigate the complexities of growing up in the shadow of a famous parent while also dealing with the grief of losing him at a young age. We have come to the end of this video. Thanks for watching if you enjoyed this video do well to like comment and subscribe for more content to enjoy more thrilling stories. Click now on the following video that pops up on your screen.